Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the key here. Let's, what we need to do is draw them out. So I have this, this is A, B, um, E. So that's one triangle, right? Then I have another triangle that kind of looks like this. And that is a D E. And then I have another triangle that kind of looks like this. And that is a C D. Now here's the interesting thing. This is a line. What do I know about this angle and this angle? They are supplementary. Supplementary, which means they add up to 180 because it's a linear pair. Now, if if this angle is 90 degrees, what would this one be? 90 degrees as well. So technically, this little angle right here is this. Okay. Now let's let's go through there. It says angle side angle. Let's mark the sides. Okay. So I have this one, which is from. D to C. So that's congruent here. Then I have this one, which is from B to C. Uh-oh. I got a fourth triangle. <coughs> so this is B, C, and then this is E. Hmm. Same thing here, if this is a linear pair, adds up to 180, if this is 90, then the other one has to be 90, so this is a right angle. Now, in order for this to be angle side angle, there are only two triangles that I've drawn on the board that actually have a congruent side based on the image that's been given to us. What are those two triangles? A, A, B, C, and EBC, right? Does that make sense? Hey, this is congruent with this is congruent. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Mr. Adams, we don't know what the other angle is. Well, we, can, we will go through and find the proof of that, but I don't have to even go that far. They're telling me I need to prove two congruent triangles based on angle side angle. That means that they have to share a side that's congruent. So as I separate all these triangles that are overlapping, I only have two triangles that actually share um, congruent sides. Now how you would go about proving that, um, you would use the hypotenuse I think you could use like hypotenuse. We've got A. So the hypotenuse on that one is AC. You'd have to prove that EC is congruent. EC is congruent to AC. That one's a little more challenging. Yeah, that one may not be as clear. I think you could probably work, I, it would be very difficult, but you could probably work these vertical angles. <coughs> and then somewhere you'll find like an extra, because you got to find, actually we need to find another angle. So I think you would work the vertical angles, but at this point we don't need to go any further. It's A. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, a... A, C, oh, they both have C, right? This is, this is your other angle. So C is congruent with C, right? So here's C, so that's congruent with C. See how that works? Angle, side angle. All right. Now, I, that's a great example. I went through a checklist, right? 
I said, well, maybe I could use the vertical angles. I thought about it for a few seconds, and I said, well, those vertical angles don't necessarily, this is what I was thinking in my head. Um, I, I thought to myself, well, maybe I should try to show them how you prove an angle side angle, right? So I had an angle, I had a side. What do I need to find? A third angle. So then I said, all right, I went through the checklist, vertical angles. Then I said, well, if I do that, all the vertical angles are somehow associated with the point F, and none of these have the point F. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe I need to take that angle and add it up because I need I need to have like uh, angle A or B or E or something. And I said, well, maybe because the sum of the interior angles have to add up to 180. And I said, well, that's not an easy thing to do. And then I said, well, maybe it's the exterior angle. Remember that the exterior angle is the sum of the two opposite interior angles. And I kind of thought through my head, I was like, well, that's too difficult. And I don't think that would work either. And I said, well, how do I find the other angle? And then I went through in my head and I, and, I, and I said to myself, well, E is an angle here, C is an angle, B is an angle. B, we already know that B is congruent to D. So E and C, and I looked over here and I said, well, then E would have to be congruent to A, and then C would, wait a minute, C is congruent to C. See how I did that? 